Okay, podcast starts now. Wow. You know, we were just talking about the whole thing of Jeremy Strong at some point in the last two years saying the word dramaturgically. Yeah. And then everyone suddenly being like, what the hell is this F slur on about? Yeah, they tore him to shreds for it's saying like, the word well, dramaturgically. He's an, he's an actor. That's like if you went to a business meeting and someone was like, does anyone have the, you know, metrics? And you were like the hell is wrong with you and then you started chasing him with spears well we value anti-intellectualism in this country it's so in a way that is disgusting it's also like what what do you think makes him such a good actor it's the fact that he's insane and went to juilliard well people are like no he's a good actor because he's on tv no 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 <laughs> you're thinking of priyanka chopra <laughs> <laughs> yeah not everyone's priyanka chopra do you Yes. Do you think acting is an art? Go. I do. Oh. And in fact, the older I get, the more I think, maybe it's the only art. <laughs> in, a, in, an over, in an overly media-saturated environment where everything is mediated and everyone is performing, I am sort of like, actors were so ahead of their time by being completely fake and full of shit. Sure. Because now that is actually the only thing you can do to survive in this economy. So you're saying that even when someone is another kind of artist now, they are in a sense an actor, performing the role of that artist. Actors are what internet users are based on. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I know what you mean. It's like when you're writing an email, it's in a long tradition that goes back to, you know, the Rosetta Stone, it's, it's the scroll, Shakespeare. It's, yeah. And yes, it's you're not, Greek. listen, I'm not saying your email is going to win a Pulitzer, but if it weren't for all of that history, you could not write an email that said, can I have this by EOD? Wow. And in this similar way, acting, you know, the Stella Adler method, mm -hmm. Juilliard, mm -hmm. Shakespeare, whatever, mm -hmm. all of that was needed for people to now be like... Unboxing my FitFab Fun Box. Because <laughs> otherwise, how would they know? What no, they wouldn't know how to say that. They wouldn't know how to perform that and so how to I, live in that. Yeah, and I think like in each era almost, there's a certain art form that defines that era. I actually, yeah. I think almost like post-war, it was visual art. It was like painting, uh, new ways of seeing, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there have been times in the past where the defining art form is writing. Sure. And everyone is rallying around the new hot book. Yeah. And I think now the defining art form of our era, unfortunately, I'm not saying I agree with it, is acting. Yeah, that's tough for me because I don't know if I do value it as an art. So here's a question for you. Do you yeah. value photography as an art? Mm, great question. Because that's the other one that defines our era because <laughs> every when you post a photo of a croissant, that is basically based on, you know, Nan Golden. Right. You're in a, a language, you're 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 having a conversation with the past, present, and future. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> I guess um yeah, I, I guess I consider photography an art. Mm -hmm. More so. More so than acting. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Do you think photography and acting, which one is straighter and which one's gayer? Um, acting is gayer, photography is straighter. Maybe that's why I respect it more. It's interesting. I think, of course, that's like, I get exactly where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. To sort of push back on it as an intellectual exercise. Of course. <laughs> photography is so um, voyeuristic. Wow. You know, it's sure. g gay guy in the corner. Yeah. Being like, they don't know that I read. Yeah. And but I'm gonna take a photo of this party and it's gonna have an air of melancholy. I'm invisible and yet I'm invisible I'm the and center. yet I am the eye. Yeah. And then acting is so action based that it's sort of like a guy swinging his dick around. But I feel like that's exactly why, why it's gay. Uh, yeah. Because it's a gay guy swinging his dick around. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like the photographer is such a straight, like that moody straight right, guy. Right, right. American like, Beauty. Yeah, don't look at me, don't look at me, but I need you all to, I still need to have the highest incel. status here. Yeah. Photographers are incels. And they think they are seeing the world all, like correctly. Right, whereas actors have no subjectivity <laughs> and need lines in order to even know what to say. And to be worshipped and adored. Worshipped and adored, poly, bisexual. Of course. All right, I think I'm... I think you're winning me over. <laughs> wow, that's nice. Should we bring in our guest, trained actress and photographer? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that could be an amazing idea. Yeah. Am I am I rushing? No, no. I'm I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, it's a shorter intro than Oh, then we can, but, we can keep going. But I actually think to not bring her in now yeah, would, be that would be so crazy. toxic. Okay. Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, I just feel like, you know, 
there are other intros where we spend 15 minutes trying to get to a point where we're debating whether acting or photography is gay or straight. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we got there so fast, I'm like, let's celebrate by basically <laughs> throwing a party in the form of inviting one more person to our conversation. I think that's such a beautiful idea. Thank you. Um, Please welcome our friend Esther Fallick. Hello. Hi. Hi. So right off the bat, Esther, what <laughs> is your take on everything that has been said okay, so far? So I'm so glad you asked because yeah. it's been really hard for me. To, I've been and like, I could sense that. I could sense. I could sense that. Yeah. Um, we are sort of baiting so you. I'm thinking about words that have been in my mind recently. Yeah. Uh -huh. Object and subject. The way those two words are on my mind 24-7. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> okay. I think what we're saying here is that I think in acting, you're insisting upon, you're turning yourself into the object. Yes, correct. In photography, no, wait, sorry. You're Sorry, you're the subject. You're the subject. Wait. No, wait, no. In photography. In photography, you're looking for subjects. <laughs> you're, no, wait. <laughs> wait. No, aren't, no, in acting, you're the object. Okay. Wait, but you're the subject in photography because it's like, but the photographer is not the subject. His subject is the subject. Or sorry. No, because the photographer is like, <laughs> like, oh shit. I guess I don't know what. These... No, but 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 guess but what? You've opened, so hot. You've op <laughs> but you've opened a door. What? But I've opened a door. Yeah. Well, here's two and words. I guess I do know subject that. and object. Subject and object. Uh, okay, so they, they're not let's they're not go, mutually exclusive. Oh, let's go back no. to basics. Yeah. Subject and object. Yeah. Which one to you is straighter and which one is gayer? <sighs> I mean, object is gayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because. Mm -hmm. It, like, uh, the way, is an object, like, you're, like, the form being, like, acted upon? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so that's why photographer, I feel like, is a subject. They're the subject because they're, like, that's they're, like, capturing the object. So it's a misnomer to call the subject of the photograph the subject of the photograph. I mean, they're the object. Without the, the photographer, right. they would just be, like, a literal random person sitting on a stool yeah. right, in the yeah. middle of a room. Which is yeah. why it's correct, frankly, that we were saying he for photographer. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because... And we were saying she for actor. <laughs> right, because yeah. to have agency, that's sort of masculine. Of course. In this culture. In this culture. culture yeah. I didn't build this world. No. I'm just I'm just sure women have tried it, to have agency. Have not seen one succeed yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then an actress. Yes. 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 I actually think, you know how w sometimes a, a serious woman actor will say actor, like as, a, you know, Charlize Theron as an actor. Yes. I actually think women should say actress and men should also say actress. I want to see Robert De Niro that. say, you know, yeah. as a young actress, I really felt like wow. Marty understood what oh I was trying God. to say. Yes. That yes. would be so amazing. And then we could have five... <laughs> it could be all, like best, exactly. best butch, best femme. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, best mask. <laughs> they should we're do the right. We're gonna have like best high femme performance of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I would love that actually. To yeah. not not necessarily get rid of gendered categories, but interpret gender in a, through a more queer lens. Exactly. Genitals, get them out of there. Genitals, get them out of there. Yeah. And it's just like, are you butch? Are you femme? Yeah. High femme, soft butch. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, best supporting bottom. Best, best supporting, supporting bottom. bottom. I was gonna say we can yeah. do twink. Yeah. Um, bear. Bear. And bear is yeah. like we're not That's talking me trying bear. to connect with the else. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> and, and when you say bear, it's not like we're talking about like a hairy man. Like no. Judy Dench can give a bear performance. Of course, Absolutely. if she's a good actress. She's a Absolutely. good actress. You know, I think Judy Dench could give a bear performance. Yeah. I think. I think Charlize could give a bear performance. I yeah. don't think Anne Hathaway could. Do you could. think Kate Blanchett? Like, yes. Is she like giving yeah. bear performances? I mean, Tar, I would argue, is a bear Tar performance. Tar is a bear yeah, performance. Tar is a bear performance. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> I think, yeah. here's what I'll say, The Whale, twink performance. That's oh really my God. Yeah, I'm like tearing up right now. That's so Despite, groundbreaking. Despite like, the, the, what's there. on the scale, that's yeah. not what it's about. No. The performance is no. a twink performance. That's such it a twink performance. And that's the thing, it's like, I think Darren Aronofsky, frankly, was filming it like a bear performance. And that is why he, th that is his flaw as a director in that specific exactly. moment. Exactly. Mm. But but yeah. Brendan Fraser, I mean, the re yeah. he understood the twink. He understood the right? Yeah. He brought the, the twink. twink. Yeah. Whoa. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's why there's like something salvageable about that movie. The first five minutes made me want to throw up out of like <laughs> disgust for how abhorrent it was. No, like, it is, it is actually a completely abhorrent movie. And yet I am on record as saying, I was on a plane when I watched it and I cried. I cried? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie yet. You know, something actually like... Run, don't walk. <laughs> it's very uh, twink for something to be abhorrent and yet make you cry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mm. do, not to really dig s so deep into this bit that we... Madam Webb. Run into the, well, <laughs> it needs to be brought Well, first up. of all, obviously Madam Webb, but also what I was thinking is, you know, this episode will probably come out around the Oscars, and I was thinking, uh -huh. is there a way to sort of... 
use this new vocabulary we have created to think about the best performance of the year. Wow. Wow. Like, is Killian Murphy's Oppenheimer performance... I would say soft butch. I was going to say lesbian for sure. Lesbian? Yeah. Well, that's lesbian for sure. It, yeah. Obviously. That's obvious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You weren't even asking that. <laughs> no, yeah, like, that's yeah. not. Yeah. If you think he's doing gay guy performance, you literally need to go back to the yeah. American Film Academy. Uh-huh. But it's not straight guy either. I think this no, is it's, a really it's lesbian. thing. It's, it's lesbian. lesbian. I think the question is, is, is it, I would say it's more soft butch than like high femme to me. I think you're... Well, I think you're right. I actually think you nailed it. I, you. I, yeah. I, I don't think I have much more to say. Like, it's yeah. soft butch. It's like... Yeah, it's maybe not... It doesn't make good podcast material. I just fully agree with you. Sure, but sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right? Or honestly, it's it's even giving a little like... Um, it's frankly giving a little AFAB non-binary, like the poetry reading. One hundred percent. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The yeah. little hat. The little hat. Yeah. The little hat. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, that that's certainly something for your listeners to explore further <laughs> okay, okay. as they take this episode. Well, that could be a really huge win for representation if an AFAB non-binary performance wins Best Actor. Oh, my God. I mean, that would be so groundbreaking, which yes. is also probably why we loved Oppenheimer. We loved yes. Oppenheimer. We, yes. we really loved Oppenheimer. Did yeah. you? Yes. We, we do. We stay on Oppenheimer. Okay, so I loved the first hour mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. because that's all I saw. Oh. Right? Because I saw it, because no one knows how to project film anymore. And oh. it was, when I saw it, it was like, Oh, oh, it was like no. moving around. It was like moving around. Oh wow! So I like got my money back, and then I just like never found another time. Was it in New York yeah. City? So powerful. A theater in New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah it was, well, spoiler um, alert. Union Square. It goes south, just in terms Uh-oh. of the. Yeah. I, I, as a film, okay. I think it soars. Then I'd rather. Well, it's, but it's, he it's, does <laughs> create a bomb. It's that complicated kills. because he succeeds. What? He, he succeeds. succeeds, but at what cost? At what cost? So that's where it's kind of messy as a narrative, and yeah. that's where we get back into soft butch. <laughs> well, I know. Is it problematic to say that like that performance is soft butch, AFAB non-binary, when in fact it is someone who has created so much destruction in the world? Like, are we being are we being almost like conservative by being like, oh yeah, right. Oppenheimer, right. known for murdering so many people w- through his inventions, <laughs> sort of is a trans narrative. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, I think we should have a world where a exactly. non-binary can be exactly. bad. Yes, I exactly. Agree. exactly. Okay. We can't put them on a pedestal. Yes. We're like, if have non-binary people, will never cause worldwide they destruction. They could invent a bomb. They, they could invent could. a new bomb. Better than many yes. others. Better than yes. many. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Period. Wow. Um, oh, wait. I have something. Okay. First, two things. Okay. Yes. What do we want to say? What Dakota Johnson's performance was in Madam Web? Web? Yeah. Well, okay. So Esther has not seen Madam Web yet. Yeah. But d- but wants to. Mm-hmm. So, so we're not going to be. We're not mad at her for not having seen <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We'll I, see it by. I haven't seen the whale, but that doesn't mean I can't comment. Exactly. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But unlike the whale, you know, Madam Web is a nuanced portrayal of a <laughs> yeah. woman that yeah. is discovering her powers. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's I really think amazing. Yeah, Madam so Web. Cool. I certainly think. And I will try not to spoil anything. When she becomes Madam Web with the glasses, that is high femme. I think it is a, it's specifically 30 something gay guy performance. Oh, interesting. Wow. I think it's so like, I don't know. Like it's so like bored. It's the drag race contestant that thinks they're above it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Hmm. You know, what about this? <laughs> Is it bisexual woman? Well, so that was actually oh, my wow. first thing. So That's you know? actually so here's my yeah. first thing. Yeah, bisexual my, cis woman, of yes. course. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. Obviously, Madam yeah. Webb is cis. <laughs> <laughs> If you were to yeah. come here I and know, try to convince know, me I that know. Madam Webb was I'm trans, sorry. I would actually make you leave the studio. <laughs> there has never been a more cis woman yeah. on screen. Madam yeah. Webb is cis. Yeah. Okay. So I think my instinct was to be like, before she discovers her powers, it's bisexual cis woman who's in denial about her sexuality, and then yeah. she has her powers, and that means she's bisexual but still married to a man. Yeah. Well, that was sort of her whole deal. That, that was a character where it was like, I have powers, sort of. Yeah. Like, she never really had powers. So, so what I understand about 
like um, her powers is that she can see sort of in the future. Kind sort of. of. And, is it, is <laughs> and it the sort that... of is tea. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, so isn't that a queer narrative? Like well, when course. you begin to understand your queerness, like suddenly you're like, oh, I can envision a future for myself. Mm. Wow. So wow. it's a coming out narrative. Yeah. Wow. She couldn't. She, she was herself like, with she like was a like polycule or something. Yes, right? exactly. Like all her like, yeah. Well, yes. she's, well, she's mother. She's mother. To she's to mother. Them. Okay. But mother can also be mean a lot of things mean a lot of things i mean she could be just like an older lesbian that has a younger you know daughter daughter <laughs> i mean the character was kind of giving ace in a big way oh that's interesting well she doesn't have a love interest which no. is key and she actually has a that. male best friend that is in no way sexual and it's adam scott i'm gonna cry yeah <laughs> wow i think girl being best friends with adam scott is a little ace. <laughs> yeah, I think that so. It's a little ace, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Huh. I actually think Adam Scott, who I am on record as finding hot, and I don't think he himself is ace as a person, but I think his energy is ace. There's something like safe. Oh, the media treats him ace. Yes. Like yeah. Sa- yeah. No one, even when I said I found him hot, everyone we were with was like, almost like wanted to punch me in the face. No, yeah. yeah. They, start, they started yeah. revving up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was scared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Wow. This has been, I've learned so much. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, which we is maybe boring potentially, I think in the same way that Slay had its moment of like post, post irony, whatever, yeah. I think period is in that now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, interesting. I actually used to be like, you know, yeah. period is like, uh, like I was almost like, I don't say, like that's too, I and now agree. I'm like, there's distance from it. Yeah. Where it to me is such a funny punctuation now. Yeah. And I'm yeah. kind of addicted to it. I know. And I actually feel like like Slay and Period were kind of some of the first ones that I feel like I understood really how to say. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And the fact, I'm like grieving them. Yeah, that like was your Madam Web moment. By. That was my Madam Web moment, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah. And now you saw a future where you could say Slay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, I went to musical theater school and not to open a can of worms. I went to musical theater school and people were saying like gorge at that time. Uh-huh. That's tough. And yeah. I didn't, I, it was like code to me. Like it was so baffling. I was like, gorge, like how do you say gorge? Know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but like slay yeah. and period, I was like, yeah, like that in my body, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. And now it's gone. Like, how do y'all deal with that? I mean, there are how certain you words. That? I feel actually <laughs> this way about darling, where I keep so mm. many years into my life as an out and proud gay man. Mm-hmm. Period. I keep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I keep being like, maybe this is the time darling will stick for me. Like I'll say hello to someone and be like, hi darling. Oh. And it never sounds correct. Never. Darling, darling. No, I can't say darling. That's a different style I of know. lingo. It's like, I can't do that. You want to be an old gay guy. Yeah. yeah. When you get a little gray. When yeah, I get a darling's going to be true. fantastic that's true. on that's you. True. Yeah. yeah. It, it takes time yeah. to earn your stripes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do see it for you. Yeah. It, like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think if the impulse is there, it's because mm-hmm. it's there. It's yeah. there. Maybe, you know? It, but yeah. I haven't yeah. had my Madam Web moment no. of like seeing a future in which. Darling is your gorge where you're like, yes. I see it. I hear oh it. But it's not for me. Wait. Yeah. Do you feel like now you can say gorge? No. No. Did not so I'm you. feeling actually very like, what's the opposite of scene? <laughs> right. Um, uh, invisible? invisible? I'm feeling invisible right now. Yeah. That's tough. That's amazing. No, I'm just kidding. I feel this seen. Is, this is your invisible girl moment rather than, ma- is that the one from The Incredibles? Invisigirl? Invisigirl. Sure. Invisigirl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh it's, a bin- it's a sort of spectrum between Madam Web and Invisigirl. Exactly. Madam Web, not only are you seen and being, see, being seen and seeing, but you can see different time periods, different futures, different oh pasts. Oh my God. Invisigirl. Yeah. Sees all. Sees yeah. all. And, yeah. Yeah. Sort of connects all. Connects, connects all. Her web. Her web. Her web. Us all. all of us. What are some words that you say? <laughs> <laughs> what are some words that I say? Well, I have like a period I have been able to say recently because I feel there's enough distance from actually saying it. Yeah. It's yeah. stripped in irony. I do think queen is just grandfathered oh. in. We say queen to, every time we start a text conversation, it's hey queen. Yeah. yeah. That's a classic. I, I think queen will never die. <laughs> I agree. Long live queen. Long live the queen, yeah. hopefully. I actually had a moment. What okay. are some words I say? So That's ju- such a great question. Someone we know, I believe it might have been just Tom, posted that um, he doesn't like when c- cis people say king to him. Mm. And I was actually thinking about this and I was like, I wonder if, here's what's going on in my head. Mm-hmm. Let's say I'm talking to someone 
maybe a trans mask person. My instinct is, as with every, I call everyone queen. So mm-hmm. my instinct is to be like, hey, queen. Mm-hmm. Then I will, in that micro moment, catch myself and be like, well, they probably don't want to be referred to as queen. And so then I will switch it fast to king. But then that actually is worse because it sounds so condescending and it's you being like, yeah, I'm wow. affirming you. Yeah, I'm affirming yeah, you. Yeah. Wow. And I really, I had to sit with that. I almost texted Jess, but then I was like, that's not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry, <laughs> by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, wait, I have to start this conversation. I was being very like straight woman who learns about yeah. gay oh, issues like, for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, wow, you really never stop learning. You never yeah. stop learning. I can actually speak to this. Please. Um, <clears throat> I had a good friend of mine who, um, she's a cis woman and I'm not going to say who she is, but she's been on Broadway. <gasps> ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, Patty LaPone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Patty. Yes. It's, yes. Patty. Um, it's who's, what's her? Oh my God. Why am I blanking? Who's now in Sweeney? Sutton Foster. Sutton Foster. It's Sutton, Sutton Foster. Foster. Yeah. I would love it if it I came don't. out that Sutton Foster was a huge turf. <laughs> oh my! Honestly, no, I wouldn't don't. be surprised. Yeah. Okay, I won't. And, I won't. Breathe. I won't. Never breathe. Know. No reason. <laughs> but I'm just like, I know it. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> so you know a Broadway actress. So I know a Broadway actress. Okay. Congrats. Um. And okay. So I have this. Uh. She. She. At one point, like early-ish in my transition, maybe like six months, she was someone who was always like very supportive. Um. And. You know, like actually, not like mm-hmm. people who were like, um, you know, there on the day I came out yes. and being like so proud of my friend. Let's check in Esther. in three years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at one point on the phone, she like called me dude. Mm. And she was like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. But I didn't feel it. I didn't take it as a microaggression right, or anything right. like that mm-hmm. because like I had been friends with her long enough. I had seen that she doesn't, she had never called me dude until I came out as a woman. Wow. She calls all of her girlfriends dude. She calls all her girlfriends dude. dude. Yeah. She doesn't call men dude. No, this is, yeah. So like I, and I, there is a bit of a, to bring it back to Spider-Man, like a sixth sense, like a Spidey sense. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, you know, uh, I can't speak for everyone. I know when the word dude is meant as offensive and when it's not. Oh my God. Like, I mean, I can, I know when someone gendering me correctly is like, Aggressive it's is doing weird... it in quotes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just no, like I mean, I sometimes like my pronouns are she/her, and I do know like w- like there's like some days that feel aggressive. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, so that, probably yeah. your queen. Not to. I should hope so. Yeah, I think probably will not read as offensive. No. Why? Well, yes, I don't. Well, that's the thing. Of course, is like no one is going to be like, wait, queen. So you think I'm a woman? Right. No one is going to say that. But but you know sometimes well, someone might someone, someone might. might that's true someone might yeah yeah that's a good point <laughs> you never Didn't know these days you yeah. never know <laughs> oh honey I'll go to a college campus can't say anything anymore. <laughs> oh my god everyone's so sensitive oh, so you can't even call anyone that. queen oh that's say that say oh, that. Say that. Uh, that part that we have been really yeah. well that part I can't pull off I can't pull off that part I, but say you that I, no no yeah. no no uh, and I also like <laughs> boots. <laughs> Boots is complicated okay, too. Boots is complicated. Boots are complicated. Boots are complicated. <laughs> boots. I was thinking, I'm feeling so insane suddenly. Whenever we do I'm two recordings in a row, I'm oh like, oh my god. I'm like, there hasn't been a good song about boots in a while. <laughs> that's actually this is something not, I've been feeling in my wait, heart. That's not insane. Wait, to say. Uh, okay, these boots that's are made for walking. Really powerful. You uh, and said remember, just you twos put on your boots. Put on your boots. Yeah. Your sexy boots. I mean, this is a bad one, but I mean, rest in. Piss, maybe I'll, we'll put a boot in your ass. It's American oh. way. Yeah. Oh, so boots ha- have become conservative. Well, I guess they've we always. We need a boot song. We need a we feminist, need a boot. feminist boot song. A feminist for now. boot song. You know, Chapel Rowan should do it. When that's she does a boot song, it'll be great. Yeah, Chapel I think Rome. that's really insightful. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really insightful. I could even see an Ethel Kane. So oh, I'm right. actually a little scared that like, well, I think we might be past the point of boot song because like it it reads a little consumerist, frankly. It's like, why are we oh. going to be empowered by, by this by, is my by footwear. Some, song? By footwear, right? Yeah, yeah empowered by footwear like, in this economy. I yeah. don't think so. Unless it's like you know, but the boots are a like, symbol. The boots are a symbol. They're your armor. Oh. Or what if it's post-ironic and the album is literally called Empowered by Footwear and it's about how we can never be fulfilled by yeah. footwear. Oh, wow. It's a commentary. Wow. That actually, okay, who would release Empowered by Footwear? Because I actually don't think that's Chapel Rowan anymore. No, that's... Footwear. 
I mean, I can imagine like <clears throat> Katy Perry trying. Yeah. It's like, girl. Yeah. Come on. I, it's I, not, that's like, very chain to the rhythm. It's very, very like, chain yeah. to the rhythm. Yeah. Okay. It's Katy Perry. Well, she needs a. She's. Uh, we've been. You know. I mean, she's she due could, for a comeback. She could do that or a normal boot song. Or a normal she boot, could yeah. have a boot song and it would be fun. Yeah. A yeah. boots concept album where each song is a different take on boots and what <laughs> they can really do to you. That's really interesting. Could be yeah. big. Kind of like those old. Um, <laughs> Those those Christmas albums with the Keith Haring yeah, art, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, like that. Wow, yeah. There's literally no good art anymore. <laughs> Period. <laughs> that part. It's actually, crazy. <laughs> it's actually crazy. It's really crazy. <laughs> Wait, we need to do our first segment because I'm actually so okay. eager to. Talk okay, about I also have one more thing to answer your question of what am I saying now? Okay, I have one. I have an answer. Uh -huh. Also, going hog. I've oh, combined oh going hog wild and going ham into just saying going hog. <laughs> and I actually love it. You dropped my jaw with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Wow. That's yeah. really cool. We, you always have to be inventing. I do have one more. <laughs> and okay. Um, I'm trying to use, well, yes. Oh, you know, the, yeah. yeah. We have been do doing well, that yeah. George, you're really yeah. good at it, Thank actually. you. Yeah. You do it subtly, tastefully. I actually do feel like if I haven't vocally warmed up, it might not. Because mm -hmm. you kind of got to flip. <laughs> you got to You yes. have to flip a little bit. Well, yeah. well yes. The musical theater yeah. training. Exactly. The musical theater training. That was actually a really good one. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, that's kind of scary. Do you ever see someone with training and you're like, oh, I shouldn't try? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, um, let's do our first segment. Okay. Our first segment, Esther, is called Straight Shooters, and in this segment, we gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture by asking you a series of rapid-fire questions where you have to choose one thing or another thing. Okay. And the one rule is you can't ask any follow-up questions about how the game works, and if okay. you do, we will get violent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A lot of threats today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, okay. Miss Congeniality or Miss Kirstie Alley? Miss Kirstie Alley? Bringing a gun to a knife fight or having some fun with the wife tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Bringing a gun to a knife fight. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, following up, circling back, or looping you in? Following up, circling back, or looping you in? Circling back. Mm -hmm. Walk the Line by Johnny Cash. Or you look fine, except for that rash. <laughs> you look fine, except for that rash. Um, moisturizer or womanizer, 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 womanizer. Womanizer, 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 womanizer. <laughs> Beyonce going country or my fiance's being cunty? <laughs> my fiance's being cunty. <laughs> okay, being deflowered or being empowered? And yeah, they're different. <laughs> Who's Me. arguing that they're the same? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Being deflowered. Wow. Mm -hmm. Our father who art in heaven or my mother is 57. <laughs> <laughs> my mother is 57. Wow. wow. That was I incredible. That was a great performance. I thought that was a really good performance. I'm trying to think. So we rank our guests from zero to 1,000 doves. Okay. You know what I'm, but here's what I'm dealing with. What is it? You know, I thought that was an incredible performance. I want to say a thousand doves. Yeah. But I feel like we've been so easy on our guests recently. I know. I've been thinking that too. Like it really is, um, you know, there's an article <laughs> today about Michiko Kakutani, the New York Times book critic who used I to- I knew this would come up. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be clear, I have not read this article, but I did see the headline and the subhead. That's all that matters. And I believe that the argument is sort of like she used to be such a harsh critic and now she's gone soft. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are we kakutaniing? We're kakutaniing. I mean, we're, we used to be pitchfork in 2007 and now we're pitchfork in 2024. We're literally pitchfork in 2024 giving Taylor Swift's 8.2. 8.2. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. a thousand doves. A thousand doves. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. You're lucky you caught us in our <laughs> Kakutani, present day Michiko Kakutani era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whoa. Wow. Because we've been cruel in the past. We've been cruel in the past. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. gave Chris yeah. Murphy like a 300. Well, he needed to do he better. Needed, he needed to do better. <laughs> Look, people think, oh, you know, we're friendly. We see each other out. Oh, oh they, they won't give us a tough score. Yeah, we will. I, yeah. And I honestly, I was ready for whatever you brought. I was ready for whatever came. I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? It's it's I'm going to survive. Mm. If there's one thing, if there's a negative thing I could point out in your performance, it's <laughs> actually the the lack of you were so ready and so prepared that it almost felt like there was a lack of stakes because I was like, nothing I will say will make you confused or make you sort of like, uh, 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 you know, like flounder. Yeah. Wow. So you're and saying I, there was no danger. It was a little bit like, 
you know, this is sort of how I felt about the movie Past Lives. I felt like, <laughs> yes, I understood what it was trying to do, and I thought it was great, and I thought Greta Lee was great, but it had a bit too tidy of a bow on it, mm-hmm. where I was like, I know exactly what it's doing and where it's going. Mm-hmm. And I think potentially you gave a Past Lives performance. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? That makes me feel um I have something to work on. Mm-hmm. I have something to work mm-hmm. on. And I think that that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. You know what I that's mean? That's amazing. Yeah. And I think yeah. what it is is you know Greta Lee again, someone I love and someone whose performance I loved didn't ultimately get nominated for the Oscar. So I think what you're dealing with is a performance that is critically yeah. acclaimed that everyone yeah. loved. Yeah. But that didn't make the cut. And everyone's Oscar. saying like What's her next outing? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. What's her next outing? Yeah. 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 And they're looking back and they're like, wait, Greta Lee was in that. Mm-hmm. 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 But this wasn't the one. It was sort of like Amy Adams and Junebug. Like that was her first big performance. Yeah. Although she in fact did get nominated. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, uh, past lives. Mm-hmm. Now that's straight culture. I have Can to we agree. Talk about I that? have to agree. <sighs> and I, and again, that? I'm. you haven't seen okay, it? Okay, okay. Okay. No, I think it is straight culture, not in a derogatory way, just sort of like it really is a quintessentially straight love story. In a big... I, I, I So I saw that. It was one of my first dates with a, with a previous partner of mm-hmm. mine who, of course, is non-binary and we were... Um, non-monogamous. Wow, so, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so we were watching it just being like, why don't they just... Right. Just do the... No, just it, like. Yeah. What? But you know I what almost I mean? appreciate, like, there's something about the clear cut stakes and limitations of a straight love story that is what makes, you know, ancient Greek tragedy and Shakespeare so compelling. Yeah, it makes it, it's right. like, honestly. If everyone was just Polly in Romeo and Juliet, like, what's the point? It's like cell phones. Yeah. I was just about to say yeah, cell phones. Is that, yeah, 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 ah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. cell phones, cell phones. <laughs> Damn. It's like too yeah. many movies would be ruined with Polly Yeah. Yeah. We can't. That yeah. is true. Yeah. They're going to start having to do everything's a period piece set in 2003 before Polly Amory was <laughs> You know, <laughs> okay. No Polly Amory, no cell phones. That way the movie can have some stakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm reading. A, I'm reading a book, and this is actually sort of related to this. I'm reading a book. I won't say who it's by, but it's a, <laughs> no, no, no. It's by you would know. It's you would know right her. Right. You would know her. J.K. Rowling. S- no. <laughs> No, <laughs> closer to Sally Rooney than Jake. But honestly, I would say right down the middle. <laughs> we can, we can, we'll bleep it. It's okay. Oh, okay. Why is. do you, why do you want to keep her private? She's a public. Because I am about to, to criticize, criticize. In a way. Oh. and we all saw the Tina Fey clip. Got it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Basically, in this book, the main character is a mother, and she has a, I believe, six year old child, and she refers to the child with they them pronouns not because the child has like come out as non-binary just because this is a progressive mom right. who wants to refer to her child in the that child way until the child ready. yes yeah. which is something that i quite literally agree with politically i am on board and yet i'm reading this book and it i'm so aware of it that i'm like suddenly thinking too much about this mom character I'm like oh classic Portland mom classic like I'm unable to see like other elements of her because that is so jarring and I think that is what the polyamory thing and the cell phone thing does to movies you know what I mean wait wait when you see what what do you mean exactly like it like distracts I'm, you when it's not it distra- there? no it distracts me when it's the, like when she's t- saying like I change their diaper it takes right. me a second to be like oh what oh, oh right oh that's what she's right, doing right 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 and polyamory in a film would take you out. Yeah. Oh, if it were, yeah. If, <laughs> if it, it were in a yeah, film. It would, you'd be like, okay, like, we got it. Yeah. Your, it would be your about, fingers on the pulse. Yeah, it would be know? about, like, polyamorous race exactly. car drivers. Exactly. You'd, be oh like, exactly. you'd only be yeah. able to focus on the poly part. Exactly. Not the fact that they're racing. And not the fact that they're racing. Exactly. Because this woman, yes, that's a really I think this point. is what I'm, t- yes, like, this woman yeah. is doing all this other stuff that is the actual plot of the book. And I keep, like, for one second too long thinking about, Right. The the which is that's interesting. Which then I'm like, all right, so I'm conservative. A little. Yeah. Or, or about to be. Or about to yes. be. Or about to be. Maybe I'm yes. having my Madam Web moment where I'm like, I'm voting for Ron DeSantis in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, maybe we'll take that out. <laughs> well, it's too bad because I want to do a I want to discuss the film about the polyamorous race car drivers. Oh um, yeah. I just think you know the race car driver and the pit crew is all yeah. a, a polycule. Oh that's come a, on. I think they would. Well, it's either like they would win for every time because their love is so strong <laughs> and their no trust stakes. is so powerful. <laughs> they always yeah. win. Or they would always lose because they're always making out. They're in the race. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop kissing. <laughs> <laughs> they're 
there is such a thing as too much love. Uh huh. <laughs> wow. Love is love, except for at race car. <laughs> and that's the tagline. <laughs> that's that's there. Her web connects them all. <laughs> love is love, except at a race. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Well, God, race car driving really, it, you know how some things just are like almost too obvious of a commentary? Like for everyone to just be like eating hot dogs while watching fossil fuels being burned mm. and then the cars have like advertisements on them. Okay, not You're to like, be a bitch, yeah. but you sound like Portland mom right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. What? Also, are you? Do you start turning red when yeah. someone is a? And guess what? My child, celiac, <laughs> is having a great time. <laughs> um, should we get into the topic? Yes. Okay, Hester. Yes. What is your topic, and what do you think is straight about it? Okay, I'm so excited um, to be uh, talking about this today. I'll tell you one, just really quickly. One of my rejected topics. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Because I did a heavy vetting process before I arrived here today. Oh, who so, did you vet with? Yourself yeah, or not us? Yeah, okay. me. Just me. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Now that's um, Madam Webb. <laughs> to be like having a conversation with another version. I mean, you're literally actual projecting. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm now I've that to look forward to. I didn't mm -hmm. know that was an element. Yeah. yeah. She can sort so of split. Cool. She can kind no of split. Spoiler, she does it once. She does it once. And honestly, like, not well. <laughs> no. For now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Madam Webb, too. I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Adam Sandler is certainly like one, yes, yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah, um, so. but that's, there's, what is there to say that hasn't been said? But, well, a lot, actually. A lot. And, yeah. and Probably a lot. And, you know, th th I'll just leave you all with that tease and, you know, the people. But um, what I wanted to talk about was museums with slides in them. Right. Yeah. And so that's how... I'm referring to this, this sort of catch-all phenomenon of museums that you know the the first level is these instagram mm -hmm. museums mm -hmm. yes museum of ice cream now there's the museum of broadway there's um there's like a balloon museum yes. oh my. museum of sex museum of sex Ripley's right believe it or not you mentioned before but, yes so then you start getting yeah. into like some of the like 90s like experience yeah. economy mm -hmm. ripley's believe it or not the madame tussauds mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah all of these like um you know, 42nd Street sort of things that, you know, we saw them as gauche then, but now they've been sort of classed up in this way for this certain, <clears throat> like, millennial, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, email job. Yes. Yeah. Uh, consumer. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm just like, are you, what's, so these are your museums? You're afraid of culture? What, you're yeah. afraid of history? To be living in New York City and even contemplate going to the museum of ice cream <laughs> literally get on the train and go to any museum it's so hard because to me i they seem fun no 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 <laughs> don't put me in that box i just can see how someone would feel so lost and lonely that they would yeah. find themselves seeking out that culture where they would be like I don't know who or what I am. Mm -hmm. And so, be and instead of it sitting with that and yeah. trying to look inward, they're like, so I guess I'm going to go to yeah. the Museum of Ice Cream. And well, you have a really big heart. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it that way. Yeah. And I, yeah. But, uh, but what you're giving us, I mean, is what you're giving us, don't yuck their yum? No, I would never. <laughs> Thank you for saying I that. I would never ever say that in my life. <laughs> I'm just saying there's something, to me, there's like a sadness there, which sure. I don't always feel empathetic. It's, no. I pick and choose. I actually think that there's something there because I think about like, um, you know, before I was a woman, I was a Disney adult. Mm. Oh, was that so? Your transition also included <laughs> <laughs> letting go of your Disney adult past. Yes. Oh, wow. that's yes. interesting. Okay. I mean, not that I like, you know. I mean, I still like kind of. I, I'm a musical theater person. Sure, it's sure. like you know, sure. I still sort of love. What can I say? I love magic. Of course. <laughs> okay. Guilty. So, uh, what is your relationship with Disney now? I have to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my relationship with Disney now is. I love musical theater, basically. Okay, and, and sure. you know, I love the Muppets. You love doing a whole new world at karaoke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember, like, one time, um, one time I 
in college, I was uh, I was in a class my senior year called Disney's Lands. I had to write an essay to get in. There were there were like twenty people from the school. Um, it was at University of Michigan, and like they wanted one from like all these different um, uh, majors, all these different. <clears throat> Whoa! They got together like a, an Infinity War cast Literally. in order to have different perspectives on Disney. Yeah, on Dis on specifically the theme parks. Oh, oh wow. my god! Like there's like you know people that are like business majors, mm. architecture, oh art history, like musical theater. You yeah. know, like I knew someone who was a religious studies major whose thesis was on Disneyland as a religious space. Yeah, yeah. Th there's a mecca. Yeah, and you walk around. It. I mean, it's sort of like yeah. well, that's one page. What did you write yeah. for the rest? Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a really good point. And yeah. Goofy is a god. And right. like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah. Well, pretty yeah. one yeah. to one. Honey, yeah. Donald is Job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so curious. Yeah. Yeah. that. <laughs> um, but like, we, I mean, uh, as like the culmination of the tr of the class, we went to Disney World, mm -hmm. and we like studied. We like talked about it and stuff. And um, I stayed one extra day, and I thought it would be kind of cool to be in the parks alone, oh. but it was actually the loneliest night of my life. Mm. I'm gonna tell you something not shocking to me. I know. <laughs> that being in Disney World alone <laughs> would make I you feel thinking? lonely. <laughs> what yeah. was your fantasy? <sighs> You're like, they're gonna tap me to be the new Cinderella. <laughs> no, literally. I was like, I was like, they're gonna say, hey, you with the stars in your eyes, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's something magical about you. Yeah, they're like, you can't sing, can you? And then you're like, I'd be like, <laughs> funny you ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> <laughs> so all this to say, yeah. there is like the person who would think that like a, a museum of ice cream would be like an enriching experience. They're a lonely person who doesn't know themselves yet. Yeah. Well, I was able to. I think you're also being optimistic. Maybe I think, so. guess what? You're saying it's loneliness. You're saying they don't know themselves yet. What if that's just their personality and it's for good? And there's no, and that just, unfortunately there's a certain pop, certain segment of the population that is Museum of Ice Cream. I don't know why I'm being so empathetic to this type of person. <laughs> well, really... no, I think I'm, and I'm not even, I, to, by the way, I'm, I'm like, not even like saying yeah. I believe this, but I do think that is a perspective. It's worth asking. And I also think all asking. of this, the conversation we're having now is essentially the conversation that was happening about Trump voters after the 2016 election. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's so. To me, it's both. Honestly, it's like yeah. you're afraid. You're afraid of something. Mm -hmm. You're afraid of looking out of your element. You're afraid of like like art museums. But I never taught that in school. Like, right. what? I'll look so stupid right. there. But you're also art, this art museums. Like, you're. I mean, it's basically like you're going to like look at these mirrors. Yes, they show you yourself. Well, if you can handle it, <laughs> and that's exactly it. And that's exactly it. Or is it even the opposite? Is it like the people that think they're so sophisticated because they're going to the, you know, Art of the Americas exhibit, are they even more looking into a mirror because they're so like obsessed with being sophisticated that right. anything they see will just reflect back to them, I am smart. Mm. It's like either, it's like, are they are they wise mad men or are they mad wise men? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. I'm trying to turn it, I'm trying to, okay, I'm trying to turn my perspective to be hateful. Towards these people, sure. yeah, I, to, think, I think just, yeah. Esther, it's I think, to get a I think your yeah. angle on it is something I hadn't considered before, which is we had these '90s, early aughts versions of this. Right. Ripley's Believe It or Not, Madame Tussauds. Right. Those are very self-evidently lame now. Right. And this is updating that mm. for the Instagram generation. Right. Well, those also specifically were like for families. In theory, it was like my family's visiting this weird city yeah. and so, so what are we going to do maybe it speaks to a sort of arrested development of, yeah. of a certain like you know we 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 don't have houses right like millennials like right. we're the first generation you know all yes. the like um so someone like let you know a marnie right like she's just a perfect i mean truly a perfect character mm -hmm. a marnie who who never really had to look inward mm -hmm. might still enjoy the things from her youth um, having not really grown up, um, but feel shame about that fact, and so look for something that sort of also flatters her aesthetically. Yeah. Interesting. So, sh so if yeah. we could own homes, we would not have. <laughs> if they of ice cream. turn the Museum yeah. of Ice Cream into affordable housing, yes. then everyone will be flocking to the Whitney Biennial. 
<laughs> is what you're that's saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that actually does make and sense to me. And we'd have thriving me. culture again. There's something yeah. about like... The it's whole... all about rent. It's all about rent. Yeah. Well, it's also how... It's about what you expect out of escapism. Because it's like, if you're so miserable in your day-to-day -day life, you want escapism to literally be like a 4DX 3D movie that makes you, that beats you into <laughs> forgetting. George bought us 4DX tickets when we saw Madam Web. It was actually a nightmare. <laughs> wait, it actually turned, it turned out fine. Wait, wait, it turned out fine. We found the one row that wasn't moving and I am, it's not my fault. We wait. were about to have a heart attack because we were in a 4DX theater getting sprayed with water and wind and <laughs> being rocked yeah, around while it's connecting us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about the web that yeah. connects them all. That's the 40X seats. Wait, this is when I just, hold, are you going to hold your thought? Um, if I... Wait, let me remember it. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I saw Avatar The Way of Water in Screen X, which What's is that? the format. There were like 15 formats to see Avatar in. This was the one where the like they have like extra screen on the sides. Oh, so there's screen sure. on three sides of you. But the screen on the sides was like rendered so poorly. It looked like a <laughs> PS2 cutscene. Oh no. It, it looked like a Windows screensaver. <laughs> and so every time that it like, I couldn't take the movie seriously every time that that happened. Happened. Yeah, it is. That's this the only is time I've seen truly that one of my pet peeves is like leave the film going experience alone. One hundred. Like it, it makes me so it's upset. Actually, this is connected to what we're saying. Yes. Well, the, yeah. her web connects them all. Well, her <laughs> web connects them all. <laughs> yeah. But so my original point was like, if you hate your life, there's no social safety net. Donald Trump is president, or honestly, even Biden. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Then you are look you are looking for like extreme forms of escapism. Yeah. Whereas if you have everything you need, you're living in Denmark. Mm. Then you actually have the space to interpret a painting, because you have the peace of mind yeah. where you don't need to actually be like pulverized into submission in order to enjoy a movie. <laughs> you know. So not that, that there's not value in being pulverized. <laughs> yes. Well, of course. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, I actually wow. have yes yeah. I think that's um, but I, I also think that there's like there's um, even when things are going like well mm -hmm. quote unquote I think we've we've in America we've like maybe since the eighties right it all goes back to right. Reagan. Reagan. Reagan's yes. web connects us all. You know, <laughs> that's this was that's actually about. true. Reagan was yeah. the original, original Madam, Madam Web. web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what like uh, in the '90s there was like a sense of there was there was this like growing wealth, right? Um, you know, like that that Hunter S. Thompson article about like what like after 9/11, you know, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. we we're gonna look at the '90s as this big party yes, and yeah, not realize yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but there was this like decay beginning, um, and we had like a sense of that. So we I were would say around the Lewinsky together. scandal. Yes. Yeah. And um, it makes me think of Have you all seen Snowpiercer? Yes, I, I've seen it. <laughs> Finally, a movie that I've seen. I just keep thinking about like the um, the like uh, the like decadence of like the the second train, right? It's mm -hmm. a little bit of that. It's like there's like this party going on, wanting to ignore. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, the, like the decay happening. Yeah. Um, as the so light. the Museum of Ice Cream is that party in this? It's the party. It's people <laughs> yeah. with email jobs. It's people with email oh, jobs. Oh, got it. Trying being to distract like, themselves. Tr yeah, by being in a ball pit. Yeah, I yeah. can't see the, 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 rot, yeah. the rot happening yeah. all around me. Yeah. Which is so interesting because my instinct is that, it, not to state the obvious, that is the rot. <laughs> like when you're looking at this dirty, disgusting ball pit and there are people that are fully 29 years old that are like almost drowning because they want photos of themselves with oversized sprinkles, you're like, well, if that is not the rot, then what is? <laughs> mm. And now we're back to object and subject. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If that is not the rot, then what is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, is the rot like, the object or like the signifier. Yes, yes. You know? No, 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 I, I think. Like, does that signal the rot or is it the rot? Right, yes, is it, or also like, is it a symptom of the rot or is it the rot itself? Right. I guess it is a symptom. You can't argue that the Museum of Ice Cream is the, <laughs> where, where the rot starts. <laughs> yeah, right, like, What exactly. if I was like, well, the Museum of Ice Cream came first and then Trump was elected because specifically of the Museum of Ice Cream. <laughs> no, no, it was oh 29 God. rooms, yeah. then Trump. Well, the other thing yeah. is, okay, so you're talking about Disneyland, right? Yeah. Listen, we all have our issues with Disney, Disneyland, whatever. But at the very least, Disneyland is based on beloved characters that all do come from true 
masterworks. Like sure. when you look at old Mickey Mouse cartoons, when you watch um, Disney movies that we grew up with, right. like, whatever. There is a there there. There yeah. is to go to the signified signifier. Yeah. There is a signified. The signified is these beloved characters. Yes. I think with the Museum of Ice Cream, there is no signified. You go in and it's just a general positive vibes. Yeah. There's nothing that it reminds you of. There's right. nothing that it is like pointing to. It doesn't even really remind you of your childhood because it's not like you're going to Six Flags or something. Right. There is nothing that it is signifying. It's just like, please look at these colors and don't it's ask aesthetic. questions. Aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. But that's again, I think that's the sadness of it. Where it's these people that like yes. want to go, they want to do something mm-hmm. fun. And they they have a goal. Yeah. And they're like, I've seen pictures from this. It, yeah, yeah. I hope it's fun. Right. And they get there and they're like, oh, it's just empty. Like it's just but colors. But they don't. They're, I, I don't know if they're disappointed. Right, I don't right, know right. if they're thinking, oh, it's just empty. Like, are they getting that far? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to, even if they don't know I'm empty because of this, I feel like there's a sadness when they leave. Like, I have to. There's I also, have yeah. to think yeah. there's a sadness. Yeah. Because even they'll post the picture. Of course, you went, you paid the entry fee, you're going to post the picture in the sprinkles. Right. And then you're like checking it for likes and you're like, is it good enough? Oh, my God. And that's so sad. There's also something about, I, I think one of the darkest parts of our culture is the rise of half humor which is when something gestures at being funny without actually being funny and I think museum of sex museum of ice cream all of these things are semi ironic but don't have the courage to be either fully ironic or fully earnest and I think that is actually talk about signs of rot yeah (laughs) I do think it's like at least if you're going to a museum and going to a truly like a Degas Exhibition, okay? Yeah. That is fully earnest. You are like, I am seeing this great painter and I am seeing just nonstop photos of ballerinas. Then on the other side of things, what's something like completely, like if you're going like ironically to a water park, that is like fully, you're right, having right, fun right, with your right, chicas. Right. It's you're, ironic. You're, sure. That's yeah. not rot. Going to a water park okay. is not rot. <laughs> this is, no, 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 no. But Museum That's, of Ice Cream yeah. is like not being able to commit to one or the other. Right. Well, it's shame. It's, it's shame and it's also culture. honestly, it's a shame based culture. culture. Yeah, it's fear. And it's honestly wanting to like dissociate a little bit, like to just be like, yeah. well here we're all ice cream. Oh my God. Yeah, that's yeah. really dark. Because what, like, what, it's like, why do they call it a museum? Well, and and there you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why do they have to be like, and look, if it were a museum, mm-hmm. that's a different story. <laughs> if there were, like, installations about, like, that be that could be kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, uh, the history of ice cream. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Who, Who doesn't want to know? I mean, you know? I'm I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's storied. I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> it's at least one good room. At least one good room. Yeah. The first yeah. lactose intolerant girl <laughs> <laughs> who got who started farting after eating an ice cream cone. <laughs> yeah. So, but like, this is like, they have to say that it's a museum. Yeah. So that these people who are like ashamed to just have fun. Yeah. Who are like ashamed of like. Of like of maybe not reaching like certain like um, uh, milestones mm-hmm. that they feel they should have reached by now, um, they they still ca- it's like the air of culture. Well, they have to call it a museum because they're afraid to call it a church. <laughs> oh, honey. Well, yes. <laughs> because well, what we're yes. actually missing is non commodified spaces for people to congregate, <sighs> and we all know this. And we're getting and and of and what do we have instead? The museum of ice cream. I mean, this goes back to Reagan, of course. This goes well. This goes back to Reagan. It was uh, Museum of Ice Cream was Reagan's last idea, and then he died. (laughs) He was fully he had full on dementia. He was on his deathbed. Um, Nancy was giving him one last BJ. Yeah, and then he was like, and he was like, a museum with no art. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. The way that you just described um, the Museum of Ice Cream, it reminds me of an event I went to once that also filled me with sadness that was uh, at a bar during the day, and it was like you take the SAT. Excuse me? (laughs) You take the SAT as a a a joke joke? and like see what score you got. (laughs) And I (laughs) went, and they had like perform, I was like performing on it. There would like be like performance breaks. And I was just like. This is shocking. Was it a caveat? Of course it was a yeah. cameo. Oh my God. And it was just like. <laughs> That's, what a read. <laughs> Devastating. And, and guess what? You Don't should, bleep you that. You should bleep. <laughs> Don't bleep that. 
because yeah. they need to know. Yeah. <laughs> we, there are people out there going to take the SATs recreationally. It was just like, you have to move on. You are like yeah. still yeah, so yeah, proud yeah. of yourself for being good at the oh, SATs. That is, that's tough. It was so you sad to, to me. You have to let go of, and do you know what this web connects to? <laughs> This, these are people who can't see a future for themselves. They can't see a future, only the past. And that's why Madam past. Web is the ultimate hero right she now. She can yeah. see the future, sort of. She's imagining queer futures. Yes. yes. Sort of. And actually, I think the sort of is important because yeah. she's, it doesn't have this con <laughs> yeah. this like male yeah. confidence of like, oh my God, I'm going to go to the moon and plant yeah. a flag. Right. Yeah. No, it's like, maybe tomorrow it might rain. Yeah. Well, there's a community aspect. <laughs> yes. Of course. Right. It's like her sort of is like, she can envision these futures right and if it were a man like probably the man would be like this is happening yeah right? but she is like i i um i'm going to like i'm going to share that information mm -hmm. and then like together we can move forward yes it's a little it's something it's an iceberg it's like maybe this is it now let's go to the web for more <laughs> <laughs> she has an idea and then she's yeah. like and then we'll work through it together yeah and she apologizes for it. And she apologizes. And she apologizes. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Something you will notice, Esther, when you see the film is that every second word out of her mouth is, I don't know. <laughs> it's All the teen girls keep asking her, like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And she's like, <laughs> girls, I don't know. <laughs> It's the most incredible performance. The whole movie, the meta text, of course, is I don't know what this movie is about. Yes. And uh -huh. it's like, thank you. It's like, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if some of those lines actually were something else. And Dakota Johnson was like, whatever. Like, I feel like the character wouldn't know here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> There's so much going on. Why is that guy chasing us? I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just that, that for an hour amazing. and a half. And then yeah. she gets yeah. her powers truly within the last like 20 minutes. <laughs> and, then, and only sort of. <laughs> and only sort of. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, and once again, culture can't commit. Yeah. No. Well, you know what it is? It's like, you know, in, you know, the original Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, or for me, in my world, the original, I know there's yeah. more. Sure. You know, he starts getting his powers <laughs> and he's like trying to climb for the first time. Yeah. He's figuring it out. And that's like the first, that's the end of the first act. Yeah. Because that's how a superhero movie is structured. It's like, right. you find your powers, you try to use them, you fail, then you figure them out. In Madam Web, that's the finale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a symptom of, um, this is like, capitalistic bloat. Right, because yeah, it's a prequel right, to a prequel. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then exactly. if you actually take it as a I almost said exact wall. Exact wall. Exact wall. It's uh, the way that the whole movie is to get to <laughs> there's just the point. She's a normal girl the yeah. whole time. But what makes <laughs> I'm just what what not to love. But what makes it what makes it camp is that those sequels will never come. No. So we are left I with this that. sort of amazing story with no resolution. It's like Lady Bird. Like it's literally <laughs> Like she, it, it's she almost changes like, her name at she, the end. Yes, she, she does. Yeah, she so does. I'm actually interested to see if there's a trans narrative here. <laughs> you know, like, well, guess yeah. what? We're not gonna find out. <laughs> 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 yeah. Wow. I can't wait for you to see it. I can't wait to see it. I can't uh, wait to see it. I'd love to, if I could just like come on later for like a little mm -hmm. 10 minute please, Patreon exclusive, please. then yeah. we are Me giving my... I am okay with the rest of our Patreon content forever being about Madam, Madam Web. Web. You know what? Uh, Madam Web actually inspires so much hope and joy in me because... I agree. It, it's similar to what we're saying about language, where it's like what's, what's out now, what's in now. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to have a new thing that everyone as a yeah, community yeah. is like, this is You're this so is defining right. the conversation for the year. We'll look back on you this know, year and be like, remember when we were laughing about Madam Web? Yeah. You know, it's going to be I had, so good. I had the thought, and maybe you both had this thought too, because, you know, you're very smart and plugged in of course. visuals, you know. Well, um, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> about like maybe four to five minutes ago, I was like, are we dating this episode in a big way? Oh, yes. But, but yes. yeah, sorry. But I would. The last thing that felt like this, how Madam Web feels, mm. is cats. Mm. Well, people have been saying it's the cats of superhero movies. Yeah, and and cats. I actually, I still like cats jokes. Like I yeah. still smile. It, it was and a I crazy still, moment. Yeah. It was a crazy moment, and the fact that that was like everyone's last movie before lockdown. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, like I saw like a mid, like a ten thirty p.m. at like. Um, uh, Lincoln Square AMC. So we all were just doing full talk back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so fun. Um, this is like, like I still laugh. I still think fondly on that moment. So 
I do think something about Madame Web is, <laughs> and, and it signifies the death of the superhero. Yeah, yeah. Right, which is amazing. so great. Right. Like, and it, it, a, what a way a to go. Moment. What yeah, a way to go. What yeah. a way to go. Yeah. It didn't end with a bang. It ended with an, I don't know. <laughs> I love it. With the girlies. Yeah. <laughs> with, you know, the being, girls. with the girls. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it, oh. With Sydney Sweeney being in an aborted prequel for <laughs> Bat, for Bat, Girl, no, Spider, spider Girl. Spider Squad. Spider Girl. She's Thinking being Spider she's Girl. in the MCU. Yeah. Being oh, like, I can't talk about it yeah. or whatever, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. interviews. Incredible. <laughs> I also, to the, I really like that um, our episodes are so dated. Like, I think it's so funny as like, <laughs> I a, agree. a, a I like little that. journal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, keep yeah. it topical. What would, if you were to make a fake museum, what would the topic be? Wow. Great question. With a slide a in really it. Really good question. With a slide. Yeah. By the way, we haven't addressed the actual slide in case anyone has <laughs> the problem that I had. So when Esther first said this, I hesitated because I thought that she meant slides like a slideshow, like a history, right, like right, right. history so museums that have like yeah. a, yeah. a yeah. slideshow. And, and so I'll be honest, like yes. I saw a wave of confusion come mm -hmm. over your face when I shared the topic right before we started recording. And I was, I was, uh, I was, um, taken aback because I was like, I feel like this is a perfect. Totally. No, I, I yes. So, uh, but then as soon as you understood, then you were like, oh, this is rich. You yeah. know, and when There's you said language, I, I yeah. at first I was like, oh, does she mean slides or slides? But then I just use context clues, which can sure. be so, so amazing. Yeah. Context clues are hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. What would, well, I mean, off the bat, I'm like, would yours be the Museum of Broadway? Well, that does exist. Oh, it does exist. Thing. Oh, there is a museum of Broadway, and you know that it's like halfway, right? It just has because... like one bra that Patty Lapone wore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it has. Uh, it ha it's a room of like one from every show. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah. um, Beautiful. It has the padded bra that Rob McClure wore as Mrs. <laughs> Doubtfire. Mm. Um, you get to take a picture with a playbill on your way out. Yeah. yeah. No. Th well, this is the thing. It's like halfway, right? Because well, I haven't been to it. I haven't been to any of these, um, but. Like there's like there is history stuff, but then you take a picture at like there's like a swing that's like themed like hair mm. oh, or something like that. I see, 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 people see. take pictures with that. So it's sort of what you would get if you were to go to a Broadway show that had a little photo op, but all of them together. Like, you know, I remember when I went to Angels in America, like they had the wings that you could take a photo in front yeah. of. Yeah. So it's that, but then like, for every show. And you also don't get to see a show. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. I mean, is there a better metaphor for this kind of fake museum than that? It's like... It's spectacle. Yes, it's spectacle, it's like, but yeah. without the spectacle. It, yeah. I have a question. When you are in like a, a, a space where it's like you got to the end of the museum, you should take a picture on the hair chair. Mm -hmm. Do you take a picture? Not anymore. Do you? Uh I will say, I don't know if I actually actually posted it, but I did get a photo with the Angels in America wings when I went with my friend Steph. <laughs> See, this I am so uh, rocked when put in that situation because yeah. I'm like, do I do it or right. do I, am I above it? Mm -hmm. Because obviously in my mind, I'm way above it. But I And then I'm also like, but I'm human. Right. I came to the show. I need right. proof of it. Well, it's a little bit like, oh, like, what is it like? Oh, you hate capitalism, but you have an iPhone. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, you're there. Well, you know what else I do? And I do this literally with no shame. You better believe I post the playbill to my story every single time I go to the theater. Well, see, I don't. And I don't. I'm not going to be shamed for it. <laughs> I think there's something about the ephemery of the story. Yes. yes. That no, I would never do a grid for an post. Yes. I do. Yeah. Pref I love us. Yeah, and guess what? Every because it's like obviously I'm also kind of being like, look at me, I'm at a play. Right. But what's also fun about it is that everyone else who has seen it then responds and is like, oh my god, wasn't Elle Fanning like so bad? Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just bleep out bad. <laughs> <laughs> we. I yeah. I went to Cold Show. Yeah. And I like. I don't go to theater very often mm. with, a, with a playbill. Yeah. And I was like, I know the culture is take a picture mm -hmm, of the playbill. Mm -hmm. But real theater people would probably look at me and are like, you're so gauche for doing that. But it, I don't care. It's I felt so much shame. I, and I had to look around and make sure other people were doing it too. Real theater people aren't that cultured anymore. Uh, they do yes, it that's too. true. That's you true. know, real that's theater true. real theater people are, are posting yeah. the, to their grid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah. 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 And they're like a night out yeah. on the town. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Huh. Well, 
Should we do our final segment? I mean, none of us have answered my question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, but also... No, know, no, I, I can think of an answer. I can think of an answer. Yeah, wait. It has to... Cause it's, I mean, to it's me, a difficult the, one because it, it has to be something essentially bad. Like, we're, you're creating something you wouldn't even yourself want to... Well, the one I would fully... I, yeah. I would want, like... like if there was a, a hacky way to do like Museum of Gay Guy, where oh, if it were like that's <laughs> awesome. that is great, that's awesome, that's really good actually. Yeah. And you could like, yeah, there'd be you know all the there'd be the Fire Island section mm-hmm. of like the seventies, oh like and then that. you'd also like you could walk into like a dance floor that, and it was like and yes. this is what it was like, yes. like a, a fake. Keith Haring yes. um, yeah. mural. Yeah. Ooh. Like Diva's room. Diva's room. Diva's room. <laughs> <laughs> like just a room that has like the film, the concert film of the Madonna Confessions tour yeah. playing on a loop. <laughs> you could get like um kind of like like exit through the g- gift shop like poppers, like yes. random yes. poppers. Yes, totally. you're like, also yeah. a giant thing of poppers to do a photo op with. Oh yeah. Yes. There'd be like a framed yes. jock strap. A frame jock strap. Frame jock oh, that's strap. a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. Well also like I kinda wanna go like what's some of the like early gay guys? Like mm. do all, I, I don't really know like toga. gay male history. <laughs> like toga. 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 Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 what's like turn of the century gay guy? Well, history. dandies, like yeah, yeah the, the, the Mattachine right. Society. Yes, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> I think there's like something. I think it's like something like really beautiful with like trans women and gay guy history, mm-hmm. like the way it in, has intertwined. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, at certain points in history, absolutely. So people are like, oh, you're just like crazy people with penises. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're actually, there's a lot, a lot there's of different lot ways to be there. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. well, footage yeah. not found. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. So okay, that would wait, be mine, I think. Mine. That's a good one. Yeah, thank <sighs> you. This is actually, um, this, um, this actually sort of does exist. I'm thinking of like, if you go to like, um, Cooper Hewitt or something and they have like, an exhibition that's like the history of advertising oh. and there's like famous ads sure like that does exist and you could argue it is art right but there is something about like <sighs> there's almost like a 90s kids will remember this element like yeah. a museum yeah. that is basically like buzzfeed the museum it's just like artifacts from Whoa. your childhood Whoa. and it's in fact micro targeted <laughs> so that when you enter a room <laughs> it's all things that like bring you back to your childhood it's like a power ranger that's like still in the wrapper <laughs> yeah 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 that's a good one you i think that something like that is bound to happen uh, yeah. honestly yeah. Like, like, and it'll be vr because it'll be like exactly. algorithmically that's how it's VR. like so yeah. pointed so to pointed, you yeah. yeah so something that i think um like something I really like um like left left wing like uh revolutionary history and stuff like mm-hmm. that and like protests and so I think it would be cool and crazy to have like a, a um a museum that's like dedicated to that yeah. and like like uh, radical movements and stuff <laughs> like that specifically and there is this extra added layer of darkness that it's being commodified. No, that's yeah. and really being reclaimed good. and recaptured. So dark. And, and you feel like you're like doing something by going to this like the museum of radicality or something, you know? Yeah. I mean that does like, it's like you um, will like, occasionally go to like uh you know, protest art or something. Yeah. Which, and it'll be like a f- framed sign from a protest. Right. And it, and, and then like a photo of people congregating. And then you're also with people, but rather than creating change themselves, they're sort of all being like, wow, that was powerful. <laughs> no, yeah. There's like, um, there's an exhibit right now at the Brooklyn Museum mm-hmm. that I really want to go to of like queer zines. Mm hmm. Um, and it's like <clears throat> this like radical way of like spreading information within like queer punk communities and stuff that like now is being given this legitimacy, <clears throat> but yeah. like also while it's still happening. So I think there's like, I wonder what that's doing to like <laughs> the brains of the people, like, like everything that like, um, you know, I wonder if they're somewhere in the back of their mind, they're like, well, this might be like in a museum one day. <laughs> well, I do think this happens totally. so much yeah. totally. with the ACT UP uh, generation. Like yeah. it has been, that story has now been told so many different times in documentaries, yeah. in museums, whatever, that it's so difficult to actually be like, oh, that was, there was a time when that wasn't commodified. 
Right. Right. It's hard to remember that. Yeah. And things get left out. Yeah, things, of course, <laughs> the, things the get left out. The more that it, you know, like s- people want to talk about the suffragists. They don't want to talk about how the suffragists bombed things, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> Whoa. Bleep that one out. But in your, <laughs> but in your museum, that'll be that'll a be, whole room. You'll yeah. get, <laughs> you'll, <laughs> never mind. You'll get to the bottom. You'll get to, I mean, I, it would be things like the anarchist, like l- here's a bomb recipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be called Steal This Museum. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God, Esther! Done. There's a future here. That's wow. a million dollar mutual aid fund museum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Damn! Wow. Thank you. Um, <laughs> to the queer zine thing, I yeah. did have something where I like in a museum when it's like, you know, things from the past, and you're like looking at stuff in like recent past, where it's like this is zines from the '70s or something, and you're like, cool, cool, cool. And then when it gets like, and they're still being made today, and like you see like stuff from like six months ago, yeah. I'm always like, don't, don't show me that. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> you haven't had time to ruminate on this. Exactly. Like, let's yeah. see if this one's important <laughs> later. Yeah. <laughs> I hate when they get too contemporary. One hundred percent. It's like who chose that one? Yeah. Is that your friend? Uh, yeah. Be honest. That's the vibe. Do you guys know what actually is so part of this conversation, which is when old school museum culture and um, fake museum culture clashed? Mm. when MoMA did the Bjork exhibition. Whoa. Do you remember that? I don't yeah. remember this. So it was like... They I didn't go, but I, he- I didn't go either. They heavily advertised this, and it was going to be like Bjork at... Mo- it was the Bjork show at MoMA. And it had, and you sort of think, okay, it'll have some like costumes from her videos, whatever. And I don't remember the details, but it was the most like critically panned art show of like all time like it was like an embarrassing humiliating moment for MoMA it was seen as like them trying so hard and so desperately to like appeal to people that wouldn't otherwise come to a museum and I do wonder if I don't know is there a way to like let's say you are an old school museum you want to get new blood in but you don't want to do museum of ice cream what is a way to do it while maintaining some integrity I think it's. Just I guess it is the zine thing. It. Well, I, I, I do think it's the zine thing. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think, I mean, I'll speak to what would get me in. Yeah. Right, is like, is more like queer art, just like the inclusivity. Yeah, inclusivity, <laughs> yeah. inclusivity. Yeah. So I guess the yeah. answer is just inclusivity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Yeah. I've heard that's pretty that's easy to awesome. accomplish. Yeah. We solved museums. We solved museums. All right. That was easy. I'm feeling really good right now. Yeah. Like, I'm just kind of feeling right. filled with light. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow. Cool. We'll see you at the huh. Guggenheim. <laughs> now we should do our final segment. Now we should do our final segment. I wish I had one. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Our final segment oh, right, right, right. is called Shout Outs. Okay. And in this segment, we pay homage to the grand straight oral tradition of the radio shout out. Yes. Giving a shout out to anything that we enjoy. We will go first and then and then you, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. Well, yeah. Um, I have one. Okay. What's up? Freaks, losers, and not to mention perverts. I want to give a shout out to um, the new Casey Musgrave song, Deeper Well. That's right. I am enjoying this song. <laughs> I feel like, you know, like everyone else, I was obsessed with um, Golden Hour album by her. and But then the next one, I was sort of like... Yeah, this is fine. And and it's sort of, you know when you, you love something by someone so much and then the next one you don't love that much and you're like, did I ever like them? What was my what's what is my relationship with Casey Musgraves? Mm-hmm. And now this new song came out and I said, she's a genius. And I said, I'm all in. I was a fool to have ever doubted her. It feels mature. It feels uh classic and it feels um I'll say it relevant to my current life, which is so groundbreaking um when stuff is relative to my current life. So shout out to Casey Musgraves. Shout out to the new song and shout out to being a gay guy. Wow. <laughs> really brought it home at the end there. <laughs> um, what's up, freaks and losers? I want to give a shout out to Getting a Manhattan on the Rocks. People will tell you, you'll meet a, some queer bartender and they'll say Manhattan. That goes in a little koopy koopy glass. Oh, I didn't realize we were in, you know, occupied Russia. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it on I can get it on the rocks if I want and guess what then I'm not drinking lukewarm sort of syrupy whiskey mixture I'm drinking a delicious iced cocktail huh. so yes I draw the line at getting a martini on the rocks I'm not yeah. insane yeah. but guess what go to a bar order a rye Manhattan on the rocks 
and report back because something tells me you're going to be refreshed and you're going to be honestly drunk. <laughs> I couldn't disagree more, but I really <laughs> you would never do that. I I get upset when they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. I, I used to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> the little fancy glass is half the fun. I actually just wish more drinks came in a fancy the martini style glass. But what about surely it getting warm? Well, honey, honey, at the rate I drink, you know, it's not going to get warm. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's and true. there's got to be a way to split the difference, right? Like one piece of ice. One maybe, ice. Oh, pop an ice in like, there. Yeah. Well, there's nothing more stigmatized in this country than, like, <laughs> putting one ice cube. In. Like, when, yeah. when I will sometimes put one ice cube in, I'll say it, a glass of white wine. Sue me. Yeah. Guess what? It keeps it cold. It mm -hmm. doesn't change the taste mm -hmm. that much. And I have the right to do it. So that's, talk about something we should normalize. <laughs> do you okay. want to do another shout out? No. No, I'm... <laughs> He's furious. <laughs> I'm furious. All right, Esther, it's time for your shout okay. out. Okay. Hey, 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 America. What's up, gay <laughs> people? <laughs> I am loving babies. <laughs> Woo! Specifically, nieces and nephews. So, so let's give it up for nieces and nephews. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's right. I am not going to use the term nibbling. Oh. Unless I have to. I, and then I would gladly. Well, God for the record. You're ever in that situation. For the record. <laughs> yeah. But. It just doesn't sound it great. It just, it feels, we need a different word. Yeah. And maybe we won't get it. And we'll all say nibbling. <laughs> I'm a conservative, I nibbling. suppose. The point is. <laughs> well, we all are. Little kids are really cute. Woo. My niece is I was like, can should I say her name? Yeah, Doc. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> Doc's that bitch. <laughs> her name is Liv. She's Ooh. three years old, and she's starting to get to the point where she knows my name. Love that. And she's like, Esta, Esta's calling, and wants to talk to me on the phone, and it makes me feel really good, and it gives me hope, and makes me see the future. Wow. Oh, her man. web connects me all. Woo! Yeah, I love her web <laughs> connects me all. No, that's really <laughs> that would have been the t tagline of the sequel, but they're never gonna make it. No, <laughs> her web connects, connects me, me all. all. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm about to choke on water. Um, well, well, thank you for doing the podcast. This has uh, been this an has absolute been a joy. A joy. Thank you. I can't wait for our live show at the Museum of Ice Cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, get out there and go to the Met. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. going to say go to Madam Webb. But no, yeah. go to the Met. Yeah. Go to Madam Met. <laughs> <laughs> go to Miss Mama yeah. Met. Get Miss culture. Mama Don't Matt. be afraid. Don't, don't be, be afraid, afraid of be looking afraid. inside. Yeah. We believe in you. Yeah. And don't be, don't I be you might scared. Like what guess you what? See. You look at a, a piece of art, you don't immediately get it. Move on to the next one. And yeah. guess what? There are so many. Yes. You don't have to get it. It might seem like us three because of the way we're talking. It might seem like we get every piece of art. No, we I don't. Haven't, I haven't we gotten don't. a piece of art in since Madam Web, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But to be fair, we saw it very recently. We saw it very yeah. recently. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to see that and be like, oh, that's the first piece of art, yeah. art I got. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. anything else. <gasps> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, bye. Bye. Bye.